All right, get ready, because today we're diving deep into nutritional deception, how science lied to us. Oh, this is going to be good. Yeah, and we're not just going to, like, you know, swap out bad foods for good ones. Right. We're going to figure out how we all ended up believing all this stuff about nutrition in the first place. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating how this book digs into all the history and politics and even economics that shaped how we think about nutrition. It's crazy, right? Yeah. And it really challenges the idea that, you know, those dietary guidelines, they've always been based on like pure objective science. So are you trying to tell me that everything I thought I knew about eating healthy could be totally wrong? <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, where do we even start to unravel all of this? I don't know. You're the expert. Um, well, how about we start back in the 1950s with that whole low fat craze? Okay. It kind of all started with Ansel Keys and his seven country study. Okay. Yeah. He basically linked saturated fat to heart disease. Mm -hmm. And it was like a huge breakthrough at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember learning about that study, but something tells me it wasn't as simple as it seemed back then. Exactly. Yeah. The seven country study was super influential, but it definitely had its problems. Like what? Well, Keyes only focused on seven countries. And some people say that he, you know, kind of cherry picked data just to back up his hypothesis. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And he excluded countries like France. What? Why France? Well, they ate diets super high in saturated fat, yeah. but they didn't have like crazy high rates of heart disease. Really? Huh. Yeah. Okay. So this study, it had some flaws, but it still ended up shaping all the nutrition advice that you know, people were getting. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. The American Heart Association, they took those findings, put them in their dietary recommendations back in 1957. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much launched the whole low-fat era. So that's where it all started. Yep. And food manufacturers, they jumped on it too. Oh, for sure. Started churning out all those low-fat products. Yeah. But they often replaced the fat with sugar. Yeah. And that created a whole new bunch of problems. That makes sense. I mean, we were told to avoid fat. So food companies, they had to find some other way to make their stuff taste good, right? Exactly. But wasn't that a bit misleading? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it had some, like, unintended consequences. Oh, I bet. Like, obesity and type 2 diabetes rates, those went through the roof. Wow. And people weren't getting enough of the essential fats, so they started having nutrient deficiencies. So you're saying that the whole low-fat thing might have actually caused more harm than good? It's definitely a possibility. That's a huge deal. So was it just like a mistake by scientists or is there more to the story? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Okay, I like interesting. So while that low fat message was getting popular, the Sugar Association, hmm. they were busy trying to downplay sugar's role in heart disease. No way. Oh yeah, they were putting pressure on the AHA to blame everything on saturated fat. Hold on, so they were actually trying to like manipulate everyone? What were they doing? <laughs> well, the evidence suggests they were funding research that made sugar look good. Wow. And they were lobbying government agencies to, you know, shape nutrition policy in their favor. So they had their fingers in everything. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So for years, people were making choices they thought were healthy but it was all based on what this industry wanted them to believe. It's true. That's kind of scary. Yeah, and it shows how important it is to really like be aware of biases and influences when it comes to nutrition. For you sure. Know, we got to think critically. We got to look beyond just the headlines. Absolutely. Okay, so we busted the low-fat myth. We uncovered what the sugar industry was doing, but what about cholesterol? Oh, yeah. I grew up thinking cholesterol was the enemy. Avoid it at all costs. Right. Is that another area where we've been, you know, misled? It is, yeah. It's way more complicated than just good cholesterol versus bad cholesterol. Okay. It's important to understand that dietary cholesterol, the stuff we eat, it doesn't automatically mean you'll have high blood cholesterol levels. Really? So, like, eggs aren't going to send my cholesterol through the roof? Not necessarily. Mm. Our bodies, they actually make most of the cholesterol that's in our blood. Oh, interesting. The one that's really bad for your heart is oxidized cholesterol. Oxidized cholesterol. Yeah, that happens when fats get exposed to like heat and light. Then it starts damaging your arteries. Okay, so it's not about avoiding all cholesterol. It's more about understanding the different types and how they affect us. Exactly. Okay, so it's not as simple as I thought. Nope, and even... Those labels, good and bad cholesterol, those are too simple, too. Oh, really? Yeah. LDL, that's the bad one. It actually has important stuff in the body, uh, like transporting fats and building cell membranes. Oh, wow. It's all about the balance of the type of LDL. Okay. Having super low LDL can actually be bad, too. 
Man, I, this is way more complicated than I realized. Like, we need to be way more informed about what's happening in our bodies. Right. Beyond just these simple labels. And what about statins? You know, those medications for lowering cholesterol. Are those the answer? Ah, statins. Those are a tricky one. Yeah. I mean, they can lower LDL cholesterol. Right. But they can also have side effects. Oh, of course. And they don't always work the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. It's really something to talk about with your doctor. Yeah. Weigh the pros and cons, you know. Okay, so we've tackled low-fat diets, the sugar industry, and cholesterol, which is a lot. It is, yeah. What about vegetable oils? Oh, yeah. We were told to use those instead of saturated fats, right? Mm. Are those part of this nutritional deception too? They are, yeah. The whole story wasn't really told about those. Hmm. You remember how butter and lard were like the enemy? Oh, yeah. Well, that's when vegetable oils became the go-to. Like soybean, corn, sunflower oil. Yep, all those. But there's a downside that nobody really talked about. So all those heart-healthy oils might not be so healthy. It's possible, yeah. What's wrong with them? Well, remember oxidized cholesterol. Yeah, the bad one. Right. The fats in vegetable oils. Mm hmm they oxidize super easily, especially when you heat them up. So those healthy oils, they can actually become harmful when you cook with them. Yep. Wait, so we were told to avoid saturated fat, which is fine when heated. Right. And use these oils that can go bad at high temperatures. It seems backwards. It is kind of backwards. Wow. And all that processing they do to those oils, mm -hmm. that can create trans fats too. Which are really bad for us. Yeah, super bad. So we were basically told to avoid traditional fats and use these processed oils that could be even worse. That's pretty much what happened, yeah. Unbelievable. It's like a classic example of how an oversimplified message can really backfire. So it's not just about what you eat, it's also about how that food is processed and how that affects like its nutritional value. Exactly. This is blowing my mind. It feels like everything I thought I knew about nutrition is wrong. Well, Where do we go from here? That's a great question, and it's one we're gonna explore in the next part of our deep dive. Okay, I'm ready to move past all this deception and find out what we can do to be healthy. All right, let's do it. Join us for part two, where we'll uncover what we can actually do to make good choices for a healthier future. It's going to be good. I can't wait. Welcome back to our deep dive into nutritional deception. Last time we talked about some pretty unsettling stuff, like how we've been misled about nutrition for, like, forever. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. It is, but I'm ready to move on. Like, what can we actually do to, you know, take control of our health? Well, the good news is we don't have to be stuck with all those outdated, you know, often misleading ideas about nutrition. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and the first step is recognizing that there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Right, we're all different. Exactly. We all have different genetics, different lifestyles, different health goals. So ditch the fad diets and those generic food pyramids. Pretty much, yeah. Instead of just blindly following trends, mm -hmm. we need to like pay attention to our own bodies and how they react to different foods. Okay, so listen to our bodies. Right, like how do you feel after you eat certain things? Yeah. And, you know, get regular checkups with your doctor. Right, regular checkups. And maybe even think about personalized approaches like nutrigenomics. Okay, I've heard that term, but what exactly is nutrigenomics? So it's basically how our genes interact with the food we eat. Okay. It looks at how your specific genes can change your nutritional needs and how your body, you know, handles different foods. So instead of those generic recommendations, nutrigenomics could give us truly personalized nutrition advice based on, like, our DNA. Exactly. That's incredible. Is there anything else like that out there? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's all this research on the gut microbiome. Okay, the gut microbiome. I've heard that's important, but why? So basically, it's all the trillions of bacteria living in our digestive system. Trillions. Wow. Yeah, and they affect everything, like your digestion, immunity, even your mental health. Really? Wow. And what we're finding is that a diverse and balanced gut microbiome, mm -hmm. it's key for good health. Yeah. So it's not just what we eat. It's about what we feed the tiny organisms living inside us. Exactly. And we're learning more and more about how to keep those good bacteria happy. Like with probiotics. Yeah, probiotics and prebiotics and eating the right foods. Okay, so personalized nutrition with uh, nutrigenomics mm -hmm. and taking care of our gut microbiome. Those are two big things. Yeah, but we also got to be smart about the information we're getting. Right, like all that misleading stuff we talked about before. Exactly. We need to become like detectives when it comes to nutrition information. Detectives, huh? Yeah, like don't just believe everything you read. Right. Do your own research. Look for independently funded studies. 
you know. So look for red flags, like anything that sounds too good to be true. Yeah, or if they're only using data that supports their claims, hmm. or if there's a conflict of interest, like they're funded by a company that sells the product they're promoting. So someone having a fancy title or a lot of followers doesn't mean they're always right. Definitely not. Good point. It seems like everyone has an opinion on nutrition these days. It's true. It's hard to know who to trust. Yeah, and science is always evolving. Right. So what we thought was true a few years ago might change as we get new research. So stay curious, keep learning, and be open to changing our minds. Exactly. And don't get overwhelmed if you see conflicting information. Okay. Look for patterns across different studies. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the quality of the research, how they did the study. Yeah. You know. Got it. It sounds like we need to take a more, you know, proactive and personalized approach to our nutrition. That's the key. Yeah. Okay. So we're being mindful about what we eat. We're questioning the information we get. But what about our environment and lifestyle? Do those matter too? They matter a lot, actually. They have a huge impact on our health. Like how we process nutrients. Yeah. Things like stress, sleep, exercise, mm. exposure to toxins, all of that plays a role. It's like we often think about health in separate categories like diet or exercise or stress management. Right. But it sounds like it's all connected. It is. Totally. Our bodies are complex. Everything's connected. So we need to look at the whole picture. Exactly. A holistic approach. Okay. So we're eating mindfully. We're thinking critically. We're considering our lifestyle. Anything else? Don't forget about the power of community. Community. How does that fit in with nutrition? Well, surrounding yourself with people who value health and well-being can make a big difference. So like finding our tribe of health-conscious people. Exactly. Join a cooking class, go to a nutrition seminar, or just connect with friends who share your values. Yeah, having a support system makes things easier. For sure. Shared experiences and encouragement, those are really powerful. What about online communities? There are so many resources now. Oh, yeah. Those can be amazing. Yeah. You can learn from others, share your own experiences, get support from people who get it. It's really inspiring to see people helping each other take control of their health. It is, yeah. yeah. It's like a movement. It is. Okay, so we've talked about personalized nutrition, being smart about information, a holistic approach, and finding support. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should keep in mind? Be patient with yourself. Patience, okay. Yeah, changing habits takes time and effort. So no quick fixes. Nope. Make small, sustainable changes and be kind to yourself along the way. We're going to make mistakes. We all do. It's about learning from them and keeping going. I love that. It takes the pressure off, you know, like it's OK to not be perfect. Exactly. Progress, not perfection. That's a great way to put it. So we're moving towards a more balanced and empowered approach to nutrition. We are. Yeah, it's really exciting. It is. I think this is a good place to like take a break and process everything. Yeah. For sure. So what's next in our deep dive? In the last part, we'll talk about the future of nutrition and how we can, you know, keep making the best choices for our health. Uh, welcome back to our deep dive into nutritional deception. In the last two parts, we talked about how we got to this point with all these, you know, misleading ideas about nutrition and what we can do to start making healthier choices. Right. Lots to unpack. There is. But now I want to look ahead. Like, what's next? What does the future of nutrition look like? Are we moving towards something better, something less confusing. I think we are. Yeah. We're at this really interesting point where we're moving away from that, you know, one size fits all approach to nutrition. Right. We talked about that. Yeah. And moving towards something way more personalized and holistic. That's good. It is. Yeah. And we're basing it more on evidence and less on dogma. So less rigid rules and more like individuality. What are some of the things shaping this new era of nutrition? Like what can we look forward to? Well, one of the most exciting things is nutrigenomics. Right. We touched on that before. Yeah. It's all about analyzing your genes to see how your body interacts with different foods. So instead of guessing what diet might work for me, my genes could tell me what my body actually needs. Exactly. And as technology gets better and cheaper, mm -hmm. we'll be able to get these like hyper personalized dietary recommendations yeah. based on our own DNA. Wow, that's pretty amazing. What kind of stuff could we learn from our genes about our nutrition? Well, we could find out if we have food sensitivities. OK. Or if we're missing certain nutrients. Huh. We could even learn about like predispositions to certain health conditions. So we could be proactive and prevent problems. Exactly. All that information helps create a nutrition plan that really works for you. That sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Are there any other areas of research that you're like 
really excited about? Oh, definitely. The gut microbiome is another big one. Right. We talked about all those trillions of bacteria living in our gut. Yeah, and we're learning more and more about how important they are for, well, everything. Right. You said it's like an ecosystem in there. Exactly. It affects our digestion, immunity, metabolism, even mental health. Wow. So we got to keep those little guys happy. We do, yeah. And a balanced gut microbiome is key for good health. So what can we do to make sure our gut microbiome is healthy? Well, we can eat lots of fiber-rich foods. Okay. Fermented foods. Like yogurt and sauerkraut? Yeah, things like that. And prebiotics. Those help the good bacteria grow, right? Exactly. Okay, so nutrigenomics, gut health, those are big. They are. What other shifts are you seeing in how we approach nutrition? Well, I think we're going to see a lot more focus on preventive health and lifestyle medicine. So instead of treating diseases, we're trying to stop them from happening in the first place. Exactly. It's about healthy habits, managing stress, and, yeah, personalized nutrition. It makes sense chronic diseases are on the rise. They are. And we need to get to the root of the problem. Not just treat the symptoms. Right. This shift towards a more holistic and preventive approach is huge. It is. What about technology? What role do you see that playing? Oh, technology is already a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get bigger. We've got fitness trackers, apps that track our food, online communities. Yeah, it's all connected. It is. And it's only going to get more sophisticated. Imagine preventing chronic diseases, optimizing our energy, even improving our brain function, all through personalized choices. Wow, that's incredible. But with all this progress, do we still need to worry about, you know nutritional deception. Unfortunately, yeah. Misinformation and misleading marketing are probably always going to be around. So we still got to be careful. We do. But we can be smarter about it. Okay. Be critical thinkers. Do your research. Be wary of anything that sounds too good to be true. Don't believe everything you read. Exactly. And we got to hold the food industry and even healthcare providers accountable. So they give us accurate information. Right. No more deception. This whole deep dive has been really eye-opening. And honestly, I'm feeling way more hopeful about the future of nutrition. That's great to hear. It is, yeah. So what's the one thing you want our listeners to take away from all of this? Knowledge is power. The more you know about how your body works, how food affects you, the better choices you'll make. Right. Informed choices. Exactly. Don't be afraid to question things, do your research, and stand up for your own health. Be your own advocate. Exactly. Those are great words to live by. And to our listeners, remember this journey to like nutritional enlightenment, it's ongoing. Yeah, it's a process. It is. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay empowered. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into nutritional deception. We'll see you next time. And it's